folks. Pastor Butler here. This is Restoration Victory Ministries. Hope everyone's having a great day today this Tuesday. Man, listen, I have a really, really good, juicy conversation for us to have tonight. Let's jump right into this. Now. Let us pray before we go any farther. Father, we come to you in Jesus' name, giving you the glory, the honor, and the praise. Father, we pray that the Holy Spirit of God will lead this conversation tonight. Father, there will be all of you and none of me in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. Once saved, always saved. Once saved, always saved. Now, the reason why I'm, I'm doing this teaching tonight, because I had a conversation with a, a believer earlier today, a sister in Christ, and, you know, she was wondering, she had this question because she said that it's something that has come up in her life. And she asked me my thoughts on it. And listen, <clears throat> this particular subject matter has been debated throughout the ages. There are scriptures on both sides. <laughs> Ironically, there are scriptures by Paul that people use on both sides of the argument. The Bible says though, that you should study to show yourself approved <clears throat> unto God, a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. <clears throat> Excuse me, the enemy doesn't want me to have this conversation tonight. The Bible says that we should follow the word of God line upon line and precept upon precept. So we have to have a full understanding of the gospel of Jesus Christ and the word of God so that we can make proper decisions for our lives. But this one subject matter, listen, beloved, there are theologians, uh, people with PhDs in divinity who argue on both sides of the house. So I'm not here really to discredit anyone. I'm just saying I'm going to give two scriptures, one on each side of the house. I'm going to give an example, and then I'm going to allow us to go to the Holy Spirit of God and allow the Holy Spirit to illuminate us individually so that we can have a better understanding of this. Now, listen, listen, beloved. All of us have family members who have died, who we are unsure whether or not they're in heaven with Jesus. The truth of the matter is all of us, me included, have had family members that I've lost that you really don't know whether or not they're with the Lord. And most of the time, that is where the once saved, always saved comes in because most of the time it's an emotional thing that most of us have towards loved ones and family members and friends who just aren't living right or who passed and we're not sure where they are based upon the lifestyle that they were living. If we're just being honest about it. Because the reality of it is none of us on this earth, we shouldn't play Russian roulette without salvation to the point where we feel like I want I once saved, I was saved once, I'm always saved, so now I can do and live and act like I want. That is the most ridiculous thing for any of us. And I pray that none of us have that thought pattern because that just doesn't make, that doesn't make like the old country people say, that don't make no good sense. But again, for those of us who have had family members that have passed and we're unsure, we're hoping that we're going to see them in the everlasting. We're going to see them in heaven. Listen, I pray to God that all of our family members have gotten to the point or where it's at the point in their heart with their relationship with Christ where they made it to heaven. But the fact of the matter is, once saved, always saved. Listen, the Bible says, if you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, then you shall be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. But if you just confess out of your mouth, if any of us have just confessed out of our mouths, if any of us have had family and friends that just confessed out of their mouths, but did not believe in their heart, then they were not saved, beloved. And this is a true statement because sometimes some things are hard for us to understand. We have to realize that a person's spiritual state has to do strictly with who and what they are in their spirit man and where their spirit man in a personal relationship is with Jesus Christ. It can't be what they say. It can't be what they portray to the public. It can't be what you think they should be thinking or what you think they're thinking is really based upon their personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And beloved, for everyone watching, if you're confessed with your mouth, but if you don't believe in your heart, you are not saved. If anyone that we know has confessed with their mouth, but they don't believe in their heart, then they're not saved. I know it's a hard thing to hear, but it's truth. It's truth. 
Now, I'm going to give two examples of scripture because, again, uh, you can Google this and you will see that there's uh, this debate has been going on forever. And there are scriptures on both sides and there are scriptures on both sides based upon how you interpret it. You will walk away with a certain understanding. <clears throat> Most of us make decisions in our flesh, but a relationship with God is not a fleshly thing. It's a spiritual thing. The time is coming and time now is when those who worship the Father must worship him in spirit and in truth. For God is a spirit and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Not in emotions, not in your ideologies or your, your logical thinking or your ideas or your ideal way of thinking. None of that matters, beloved. Unfortunately, humbly speaking, none of that matters. One of the scriptures that we use, people say the gifts and calling of God, or gifts and callings of God are without repentance. That's a scripture that they use for once saved and always saved. And, and again, there are many. I'm just using this one. And it's true. The gifts and callings are, of God are without repentance. Meaning what God has given you, he cannot take back. If God has given you salvation, he cannot take that salvation back. But beloved, we have to understand that we can take that salvation off. God can't take it back, but we can do things ourselves to thwart that course, to thwart that salvation. If God has called you to do something, perfect example, in, the, in, in Exodus with Moses, with the children of Israel, when God called Moses, gave Moses direction, told him what to do, when Moses and his family was headed back to Egypt, in the end, God almost killed Moses, almost took Moses' life because Moses wasn't obedient and would not circumcise his son. And the Bible says that his wife circumcised the kid and told Moses, you are a husband of blood to me. So God couldn't take this, the calling back from Moses, but Moses, because of his disobedience to God, was about to throw it and take his own calling away. We have to understand, again, we have to read the Bible and read it in truth, line upon line, precept upon precept. If a man or woman is called and they believe in their heart and they confess in their mouth, God cannot and will not ever take that back. But if a man or woman is born as a child in the church, like me, in the South, we're going to use me for example now as we close this. Now, that, that I'm sorry, the gift and calling scripture was for once saved, always saved. There's another scripture that's against saved, always saved. When Jesus said, in that day, there are going to be many that come unto me and say, Lord, if I have not prophesied in your name, have I not cast out demons in your name? Have I not in your name done many great works and I will say unto them, depart from me, I never knew you, you who practice iniquity. So now let's look at this real quick. These are Christians. The, the Bible says, Jesus said, Jesus, words in red, Jesus said, there are many going to come unto me and say, Lord, which means now they're calling Jesus Lord. In your name, in the name of Jesus, have I not cast out devils? In the name of Jesus, have I not spoken tongues? Have in the name of Jesus, have I not done many good works? These were Christians. These were believers. These were followers who Jesus is going to say to, depart from me, I never knew you, you who practice lawlessness. So just on that level, the gifts and calls of God are without repentance. God is going to say to those who are calling on his name, who are doing great works in his name, who are doing it in the name of Jesus, He's going to tell them, depart from me. I never knew you, you who practice lawlessness. I want to go even farther. I'm one that believes that a person, once they're saved, they're not always saved. Now, saved again means a believer. So to be saved, you're a believer. You believe in your heart. You confess at your mouth. Then you're saved. Saved, salvation, soteria in the Greek, to be made whole, to be made complete to be rescued, to be delivered, to have the ransom paid, redemption. That's all part of being saved. But that's because you're a believer. So if you go into the front, of, just use this as an example. I'm going to use me as an example now. As I close out, I'm going to use me as an example. Because listen, as I said earlier, th this is a two-part subject matter. First of all, for all of us who have family and friends who have passed and we're unsure where they are, we're hoping that they're with Jesus. The fact of the matter is that we have to, or if we're unsure about their salvation, that in itself is an issue, which means that we don't know 
whether or not they believed. We don't know whether or not they were living right. We don't know where their spirit man was with God because of the way they were living. And, and, and prayerfully, all of us have had family members there. I was there. Had I, had I died, had the Lord taken me home in some of my sinful states, I'm not sure where I would be. Because I was, praise God, again, using me as an example. That, um, wait, before I, before I go there, as I close. So we have those. And I humbly sympathize with everyone who has family members that they love and that they're hoping to see again. But our flesh doesn't supersede the word of God. And just good logic. Secondly, there are those of us right now who are living on this earth who want to do just enough to be Christians. I'm born again. I'm saved, but I can do what I want to do. I can live how I want to live. We're playing with our salvation. We're playing with our soul. And that is not smart. Because I just told you what Jesus said. That scripture that I quoted you about, what Jesus said, that's in uh, the book of Matthew, chapter 7. The book of Matthew, so you can read it for yourself. Depart from me, I never knew you. You who practice lawlessness. Me. I was born in the church, literally born in the church, family church, everything in the church, my family, we were the, the ministers, the pianists, the ushers, the deacon, the, I grew up in the church, Sunday school teachers, every, I played drums in the church, every time the church door opened, I was there, and then my mother, when she became Holy Ghost filled, we were going to church four or five days a week, so I was born again as a child, baptized as a child, a Christian at an early age. But then there are times in my life when I was living a certain way that I had really walked away from anything Jesus. And I had really didn't even have a consciousness or a concept of Jesus because I was doing what I wanted to do. And even and, and if I had died in those states, beloved, I, can, I cannot say honestly that I know that I would be in heaven with Jesus. Because I know the thoughts that I was having. I know when I was confused. I know when I was reading too much of the worldly books and books that didn't make any sense and books that were not of the gospel of Jesus Christ and listening to what everyone was saying and involved with relationships with people who were practicing stuff that they shouldn't be practicing or, you know, everybody wants to be, you know, an Egyptologist and, you know, the sun and the moon and the stars and all that and all that junk. And you can get caught up in that. And a lot of times when you get caught up in that, you can turn your back on Jesus. There was a lot of times with some of the stuff I was going through. I was a Christian, but I didn't know if I believed or not. I really was unsure. But even worse than that, there was a time in my life when, again, reading all this worldly stuff that I had decided I was going to become a Muslim. Yes, me. I'm looking everyone in the eyes. And, I, and, and I've told this, I've given this testimony before. Um, I was at a point where I had decided I was going to become a Muslim. And God squares my heart, and I felt like I was having a heart attack. And I started crying and screaming and apologizing to Jesus. And I was not fear, worry, joy, doubt, happiness, all at the same time. But I knew it from that point on that there was nothing but one God, and the power of God had touched me. So that saved me. But what if, because there are many people I know who have, what if I would have decided to become a Muslim? I know many men and women who grew up in the church, born in the church, and they become adults and they walk away from the gospel of Jesus Christ. They get mad at God. They start doubting God. They start believing in other religions. They fall away. They're not a Christian no more. They become whatever. Some become, okay, so not to bash anyone. So I'm going to back, back on bashing me. Had I become a Muslim, a full-fledged Muslim, at that point, I am no longer a believer. At that point, the spirit that is on me is the spirit of the Antichrist. At that point, I say that Christ is not the Savior. At that point, my redemption and my salvation has fallen away. Because I am no longer born again in Jesus Christ. Because I have the gifts and call of the God are without repentance, right? God's gift to me are without repentance. They're always there. But I decided I didn't want God's gift and I chose something else. So at that point, I'm not still saved. If I'm a Jew or a Buddhist or a Muslim or all the other different religions that there are out there that's not the gospel of Jesus Christ, 
I have the spirit of the Antichrist. I'm not saved no more. Even if I once at one point was saved, once I walk away, once I switch teams, once I switch my jersey, then I'm not on team Jesus no more. And beloved, that's the truth. And if I had switched teams or if I was on the other team and I died, I would not be in heaven with Jesus Christ. There are some of us who switch teams and then become champions for the other side. There are some of us who switch teams and become more loud and boisterous for the other side than we ever were for Jesus Christ. So how can someone in good conscience say that that person is still saved? Now, God may give that person a chance for repentance. Something can happen in that person's life where they can come back home. The prodigal child can always come back home. Praise God. The prodigal child can always come back home. But if the prodigal child decides that he does not want to come back home, he does not. If the prodigal child denounces his family, denounces his family name, even though he was once a part of that family, even though he was once saved, he is no longer saved, beloved. I mean, that just doesn't even make good sense. And I know it's painful and I know it's hurt. But remember, once saved, once a believer, always a believer, if you still believe. If you still believe. Now, believing in your heart causes you to feel a certain way about your relationship with God, which causes you to live a certain way, which causes your light to shine a certain way, which causes there to be an outward expression of your inward conviction. But that's a whole nother teaching. That's a whole nother teaching for another time. But just think about that. Just think about that. If a person is a Christian and they walk away and they become an antichrist, spirit of the antichrist, they serve a different religion, a different faith foundation altogether that has nothing to do with Christ. If they denounce Christ, then how are they still a believer? And if they're not a believer, then how are they still saved? Just something for us to think about. Something for us to really, if you really want to know it, if you really want to know the truth, ask the Holy Spirit of God. He will lead you and guide you into all truth. Do the research on the scripture so you can read for yourself. Study to show yourself approved. A workman that a workman <laughs> study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needed not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Listen, thank you guys for joining in. I pray that you have a blessed night. I look forward to speaking to you again soon. God bless. Bye-bye.